just grinding 65 hours plus a week and I decided to drop out of college and then I thinking we're killing it you know by squeezing two grand out on a deal and I just had a big flip and made 2,000 bucks to where most of our investments are multi-million dollar luxury deals multi-family and having a partner that can balance you out we each have our strengths and we have our weaknesses it's my work marriage is what I would say you know what were the things that kept you up at night? Putting up world? with me was probably his biggest. The biggest. Yeah. It's probably your daily challenge. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what we really want to see is the employees that do come in. We want to make sure that they're successful and they're always moving forward. We want to see them do better than we're doing because obviously if they're doing well, so are we. Not one of our employees is put in a box. They can do as many things as they want. Volume wise, we have a target of what we want to do. We want to get to a billion annually. And that's been the biggest thing, you know, and everybody, like when we talk about you guys, like that's the one thing, like it's, they perform, right? Not only just getting it done, you know, one of the walls in our office says get shit done. That's what we're not, we get shit done. Yeah, we want to see everybody that um, works with us or partners with us, everybody makes money. 15 years ago. Yeah. The guy still looks the same. I don't know what pill he's taking. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know this tall fucker. <laughs> it was crazy. You know, made a couple of good rarely. ones. <laughs> oh man, Phoenix Suns. What needs to happen? What's gonna happen? Suns. Blow it up. <laughs> Blow it up. Blow it up. Yeah. Blow it up. <laughs> no. Counting your blessings. Like, I work really hard so that my kids don't, you know, grow up wanting, needing for anything. Also, don't want them to be spoiled. They'll need us anyways to do the deal, right? <laughs> next, <laughs> next time. Find the house too. Welcome back to the pod, everyone. We are super excited to have uh, one of our best friends and business partners here today, Ryan Myers and Brent Nardecchia. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thanks How for having you? us. And before we go ahead and get this show on the road, um, I'll give you a little background about those two guys. So let's start with Brent. Brent has been in the business for almost 20 years um, in Phoenix. Um, he's partnered for before with a very reputable uh, lender in town. Now is on his own together with his partner Ryan Myers. Um, those guys have been nothing but amazing with us and, and any of our clients. So uh, we appreciate you guys uh, a lot. You guys know that. Um, so outside of all the lending activities that those guys do, um, you can find Brent uh, with spending a lot of time with his family. Uh, on the golf course, uh, certainly some room for improvement there, um, um, or at the Suns game. So the guys are always out and about. Uh, Ryan Myers, they've been friends for a long time, similar like Patrick and myself. Um, lending experience almost 18 years um, in the business. Um, anything from residential, commercial, investment, retail loans, you guys pretty much do everything. Um, Ryan's expertise especially is a remarkably wide field of scenarios for all borrowers, which is uh, a big asset to you, to our clients, and anyone who works with you guys. Um, originally from North Dakota. Heck yeah. I, uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't Far know that away. one. Um, and uh, yeah, relocated to Phoenix 2013, yep. right? And yep. um, yeah, we're super excited to have you guys on the show, and let's, uh, let's get going. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thank we you. Appreciate it. Well, before we get fully into it, we got to make uh, Alan happy, our video guy. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, like, share, uh, Spotify, Apple, um, everywhere. He's going to put all the links down below. So make sure you stay uh, stay on it with us, and we'll uh, put out a lot more content. Um, and today it's going to be uh, obviously a lot about uh, lending, deals, developments, um, because you guys are not just loaning money to other people you're actually investing a lot of money yourself doing deals mm -hmm. uh, maybe give us a little bit of the the background on how you guys get into the business and kind of how it evolved to where you are today yeah well myself 2003 moved here from ohio so i uh transplanted here was set to go to school asu decided to uh try to save my parents some money and i went to scottsdale community college but with that I got into the mortgage and real estate game and had some really powerful mentors. And one day I was sitting, I think it was the second semester in college. I was sitting in class and 
this was before the market really took off and the boom was happening. And I'm sitting here going, I've got a bunch of deals to work. I was a junior learning the business, just grinding 65 hours plus a week. And I decided to drop out of college. And then I left class that day, talked to my dad and he's like, what the hell are you doing? You need to go to school. I said, I'm doing this with you. This is what we're doing. And I'm all in. And never looked back. I uh, went through the boom, thought I knew a lot about the business, made a little bit of money, had an ego. Then the crash happened, and everything stopped instantly. It was 2008, 9, 10. And what I did was I just dove even deeper into the business and learned every part of the operation from the mortgage operation to the real estate operation. And that just made me kind of indispensable. And I did whatever it take to get by. I had no family to help with bills or do, you know, couldn't get loans from people. I just had to figure it out. And that was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I had to survive on my own, really dig deep, master the craft, and never look back. You know, we, I was fortunate to partner and work side by side with Frank Madaya. He's an old legend in town, and we have a great relationship. And Last year came a point in our relationship where it's like, we need to kind of part ways. You need to do your thing. He still has a little bit of runway left in, you know, his operation, and he's doing great. But, uh, yeah, it was just great. It all happened for a reason, timing, learned a lot. And through all those years, we were also investing in real estate. From trustee sales, where we're down at auction with different partners and thinking we're killing it, you know, by squeezing two grand out on a deal. And I just had a big flip and made 2000 bucks and going into it, you know, 10 years later with Ryan and we're not doing any luxury homes. Let's just do, you know, base hits, doubles, you know, triples to where most of our investments are multi-million dollar luxury deals and then multifamily and just kind of went nuts from there and never really looked back. But how did you guys meet? <laughs> Banking. So he worked at Western State, a local bank here, boutique bank, and we just built a really good friendship through business. And I was brokering a lot of paper to him. He never let me down. It was great with our customers. And then we started developing that friendship and investing together. And then we had a plan that he would join me, and it was like a three-year plan. Ended up being six months. Brian had a massive back surgery which kind of propelled everything. And I was like, let's make this thing happen. He's like, oh, we got to wait a little bit. And then I think it was the very next week, he's like, yeah, we're doing it. And here we are today. Yeah, always the best time is today, right? Like, you know, always said to do it right now. Um, yep. Ryan, so you, you maybe give us uh, a little bit of the story, what happened the last, you know, year or so since you guys like really took off with your own business and, you know, how you came up with the idea and first steps and everything to where you are right now. Yeah, so I originally, obviously from North Dakota, you guys brought up, and uh, I worked at a big box bank there for many years. And then um, that kind of, the state kind of quit there. So then I went to Western State, like he said. I moved down here in 2013, um, mid-year. And then with Brent and Frank, they were sending deals over to the bank. Um, construction deals, uh, a whole numerous amount of deals that we did them for them. And then kind of like what Brent said, we decided over time to, uh, you know, have a partnership role in with like investment type stuff. And then also working together. So we got together and we did uh, a couple flips here and there on some items. And they worked out kind of. Made some, made lost some. Made some, lost some. You know, you know yeah. how that goes. But um, in turn, I had back surgery. And then uh, we kind of decided to bring our partnership together and start our, a mor the mortgage company, High Place uh, Mortgage. We have High Place Investments for our flip stuff. And then we have a whole bunch of other things that are entities of High Place as well. So based upon those items, you know, now we're, you know, building homes, uh, you know, specs and whatnot, selling them off, and then also running the mortgage business. So it's been, it's been quite the adventure. And, you know, Brent's a great business partner to be in with. He's on top of everything. So it's kind of, we're kind of the same in that aspect, you know. And then obviously, you know, we met you guys through what we're doing as well. So it all comes full circle. Um, just trying to grow everybody around us is basically what it comes down to. And having a partner that can balance you out. We each have our strengths. Yep. We have our weaknesses. I'm the more temperament, high-strung guy. He's more happy-go-lucky, easy, but it just works. And we're at the end of the day, we don't even really have disagreements. It's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. You know, we just—it's yep. a good compromise. It's my work marriage, is what I would say. You know. 
Yeah, you it's know. just like you two. I mean, you guys do the same thing. Same thing. Um, yeah. Whenever you guys, from your real estate to your guys' builds to everything. So what were like the, when you guys decided to actually go into this venture together and uh, you kind of branching off from Frank and uh, you going, going away from obviously a kind of a fixed salary situation uh, to running your own business, what, yep. what were like the, what were the things that kept you up at night? Um, and the reason I'm asking that is because obviously it's very interesting to kind of um, take a peek behind the curtain and, and Patrick and I had yep. had a similar, similar situation. Mm -hmm different background um but c kind of in the same industry so i'm very curious to hear what what were those things that you guys were thinking about before it actually happened and i remember at the time yeah. you and i spoke a lot so yeah it's you know 2022 the market was starting to change and there were lenders out there that didn't have any business and we actually posted our biggest years in our career in 2022 last six months of 2022 weren't as healthy as what everybody was used to in the lending business. And I, we looked at each other and I'm like, we're doing a lot of business, but we have enough breathing room to where we can get the company built very quickly and not skip a beat. So we did a transition and we launched our correspondent banking company, which is a different level than a broker. We have our own warehouse line of credit. We fund in house, we do docs, we have full control of our files. And my team was impressive, our team, I mean, they banged everything out to where we transitioned very smoothly. There were some challenges, but we didn't miss a closing. We had the operation really fully running in 30 business days. Like, that's unheard of. But it took all the years of the relationships we built, from banking relationships to warehouse lines of credit. Everybody in the operation was all hands on deck, and just experience is the only reason we were able to do it that quickly and get it up and running. But it also costs a lot of money. So just having these shops, especially at a correspondent level, you have to have certain liquidity requirements and liquidity tests, audited financials every so often. Banks are monitoring your financials. And then you have the state. There's licensing requirements. You're at mercy of the states to get you up and active. So, so many layers, insurance, bonds. Uh, so it just took all hands on deck. You know, when we did the split, we took uh, – almost half the previous operations staff because Frank and I ran pretty parallel together. Still a great, healthy relationship, but he had his kind of branch of the teams and I had mine that were accustomed to working with me a little more. So that transitioned pretty smooth as well. So we had seasoned, time-tested employees to join our team too. And I don't even like calling them employees or family. They're part of the team. We can't do what we do without them. So what kept us up at night is – just timelines. You only can push people as fast as they allow you to push from state banking to investors, big banks that we need them to buy paper from us. So you could push, but it, we were, we had those challenges of like, there's so many boxes you have to check. But the biggest thing is we can't let our relationships down. I'm taking applications in, we're transitioning, you have to close. The biggest thing with us is we close deals, whatever it takes, all hands on deck, and I don't ever want to let our relationships down. So I guess that was the only thing that really kept us up. And the market's still humming. You know, there's a lot of negativity in the market, interest rates. People are still doing deals. We're still busy. You know, we could be busier, but things are good. Before, we, before <laughs> we talk about the market, Ryan, what was your... So it's, it's, it seems like it was doing everything at the same time and, and kind of transitioning into your own... Putting uh, up world. with me was probably his yeah, biggest. The biggest. Thing, probably. It's probably your daily challenge. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> no, I think uh, just the transition. I mean, we kind of had a plan for that. And uh, I don't know. We're pretty good with our staff, I would say. Like, we're always for our staff. We're not telling them to do stuff. We're asking them to do it with us. So it's more of like a team atmosphere, I would say, when we come in. The employees that do come in, we don't require our employees to come into the, to the office. They can work from home as long as they're getting their stuff done. So we're really relaxed on how we work, but what we really want to see is the employees that do come in. We want to make sure that they're successful and they're always moving forward. We want to see them do better than we're doing because obviously if they're doing well, so are we. So it, it's it's kind of our motto. So um, Brent and myself, we, we don't, from our mortgage company, as of right now, we've been on operation since October 1st. It's been, we haven't taken pay from there just because we're, we're giving it back, you know, we're advertising. We're investing money into the flip company. So 
we technically don't even take a, a, a salary from. It just stays in the business. It just stays in the business right to now. Keep the stability and the healthiness and for the business and yep. the growth. And that's a big thing you hit on that I didn't. Employees and team and growing everybody else. That wasn't what we were accustomed to in the past. And everybody in our companies have a voice. We have weekly meetings on Wednesday where every employee gets to talk their wins, what they're struggling with, how can we help them improve, what they're happy with. Just giving voices to where, you know, people aren't used to that. You know, in corporate settings it happens, but empowering them. Mm -hmm. Not one of our employees is put in a box. They can do as many things as they want and learn to benefit from. The more they do, the more they make, the more they provide for their families. So it's just giving opportunity to certain individuals that normally wouldn't have that opportunity. And then as a reference, you said you booked your biggest year last year. What does that mean in numbers? And what's your setup right now in the new company? I mean, how big is the team or the family? Yeah, Brent, um, he he was number one in Arizona for uh, mortgage lenders. So obviously nice work with that. But then for company-wise, that puts our company, um, I think it was 16 in the nation. 62 in the whole nation. 62 in the whole nation. As number one in Arizona in Scotsman Guide. The only one other person in the whole state would have been Frank, which is great because yep. he's a machine, love the guy. But um, volume-wise, we have a target of what we want to do. Uh, we want to get to a billion annually with the staff that we have. Um, we only have five loan officers. Um, most big box companies doing 200 plus million, you know, have 50, 100 employees, 200 employees. So we want to stay high volume boutique, but most importantly, service the clients that have always been with us, uh, take care of us, we take care of them. Um, We have 14 employees currently in the mortgage company. And just with, you know, the volume Ryan and I do, there's tons of uh, sustainability there. But the end all thing is growing. You know, we want to expand slowly with the right people. People who are with us from the beginning get to expand with us. Their positions, you know, uh, increase. They have people underneath them and kind of just grow it up organically at a healthy pace. You see a lot of guys go big too quickly, and that goes bad. You know, if you salaries are a big killer in companies if you don't manage them right. So we're really cautious on that. We have a lot of people knocking at our doors wanting to work with us, but we're not here to hire to fire. So I want to take on Build like a strong right, base. Yeah. yeah, strong base, the right people. Um, that way we're not letting anyone down. Like I think it's more than just us. Like and there's the families biggest, who depend on us. And that's been the biggest thing, you know, when everybody like when we talk about you guys, like that's the one thing. Like it's they perform, right? Like mm-hmm. why are you guys you know, there's so many lenders and people in the industry same as realtors, right? Every so I was like, why why do people go with Max and Patrick like over all these other guys, right? Like, it's 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 ultimately just performance, right? Whatever you guys do, you say you do this, and it's actually going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, it's you know, and Max obviously one that like falls up fifty. You know, we always have a, a good time laughing about it, right? When he sends Persistent. like nine fall up texts, and you know, and and you get to a point where I'm like. Like, you don't even ask anymore because you know it gets done, right? Yeah. And I think you guys did a, did a phenomenal job in, like, setting it up to where it just it just happens, right? Like, it, it just gets done, right? And I think that's that's huge. Um, so you have the, the obviously, the, the mortgage company. You have that big, you know, billion-dollar goal. On the other side, you have the development. Like, what are your next steps and goals on that side? Because that's obviously something we do a lot, too. And it's a whole different business, different, you know, risk and reward yeah. structure right? um i, w- I want to touch on what brent said we we have meetings on wednesdays but those meetings aren't just to have meetings those meetings are are for the employees like there's a benefit to them Mo- like the banks i used to work with we had meetings just to have meetings to have another meeting i mean they're kind of pointless right and they didn't have a voice yeah, yeah. It, it, everyone it's... needs to be appreciated that's key in our business yeah because people get run down i mean and you naturally do yep. so you're from to correlate with a you know loan processors like a transaction coordinator in a, a real estate office like they do a lot of the nitty gritty hard work uh, and a lot of times they don't feel appreciated so it's like our meeting we had earlier with our sales team I was like guys you need to go above and beyond to n- nourish those relationships in our back office mm-hmm. do nice things for them you know I do extra all the time for them and it's you know either a thank you card or 
little cash bonus, something that doesn't hit, t- you know, things that you go out of your way above and beyond what they're already doing to show some appreciation because you're only as good as your team. I learned that the hard way for years, you know, just running and gunning as Rambo, didn't have enough support behind me. It impacted my relationships from realtors, from clients. Like, I didn't have enough bandwidth. And that was one thing when we changed. We are going to have plenty of bandwidth so that we can make sure we service everybody to the high place brand and deliver not only just getting it done. You know, one of the walls in our office says get shit done. That's what we're known. We get shit done. But giving all the white glove service, hand holding, the whole nine yards, and you can't do it by yourself. You have to have people around you supporting the business. So you got to take care of those people that are around you supporting your business too. Yeah, and to speak on the um, investment side of our business where we're doing our spec builds and whatnot, so we have a handful of uh, specs going right now. All those, I would say, are in the 3 to $5 million range sales price. Not as big as you guys. <laughs> yeah, um, Arcadia is where we like to be in. And then also right now we have a new commercial building we're building um, for our mortgage company. And that alone should be um, done in December, but that's going vertical right now. So um, there's a lot of exciting things going on. Yeah, a lot of exciting things. So the game plan on that end, do you guys want to expand that side of the business or you just want to have a certain volume of deals going at the same time? Expand it, create opportunity for more people to be involved, collaboration, and everybody wins together. That's the next chapter of growing everybody else up. Um, like we've been talking a lot about off record and stuff, it's relationships. It's not transactional relationships. Sometimes you have to trim the fat with certain relationships that can be hard. But if they're not on the same path that you're on, it's not productive for anybody. And we want to take care of our community and the people around. So surrounding yourself with like-minded people who uh, have the same vision as you, I think it's really important. You know, We've been really focused on elevating not just business, but our health, you know, family life, relationships, all those things, because it's all connected one way or another. And sometimes smaller circles, I think, are better. Uh, But in the business standpoint of growing the right people who want to take and go with you and grow, you know? Yeah, we want to see everybody that um, works with us or partners with us, everybody makes money. Not necessarily just us. We we, we get it. Like, we have to have everybody else making money. We'll be successful regardless. So if we can have enough people underneath us being successful, it will pay its dues to us. So that's and, kind of our philosophy and game plan. And, you know, our town is really big, but it's small. Very yeah. small. So everybody talks, you know, and everyone sees the trajectory you guys are on. And I get a lot of phone calls. Hey, Matt, I know you work with Max and Patrick. And, you know, one thing that I have learned from, too, is, like, you, got, you guys both – especially Max, is a master connector. And that, I used that in a meeting today, actually. And I was telling our younger sales guys, like, connections. And one person I think of is you because you talk to everybody. Everybody likes you, and you're just, you guys are connected. And I think that's really important, maintaining those connections and growing off of that because with all the connections, you naturally, things fall in your lap. It creates a, it a, creates a good network. synergy, yeah. you know. And the big thing with us is, we don't buy leads. We don't do any of that stuff. We don't. We do refinances. We're not out dialing for dollars, doing that kind of stuff. What keeps us alive and our employees fed are relationships, and it's the realtors, past clients. I have clients 18 years ago call me. I don't have their number saved in the phone, and I can remember their voice, and that's the best thing ever. It's like they're like, "You remember me? Absolutely. You bought that condo a long time ago. You were working at Google, you know." And it's just. That's what keeps us afloat. That needs to be the center of all of our business practices and also just like doing good business and taking care of people. And hey, we learn as we go. We've all made mistakes. You know, our industry, I think, is one of the hardest industries you can be in real estate, finance, whether it's title, appraisals, whatever it may be. But once you find a good niche and you take care of the people that always support you, it kind of all just works. Speak. Yeah, and, and to speak on what he said, we had a meeting, um, was it Monday or what was it Friday? Um, the, guy, the guy that was meeting us, he, he does a bunch of construction with us, and uh, he, he sends us his clients, obviously. And he came in, and he, he talked, and Brent goes, hey, I know you. I recognize your voice. And it was pretty funny. I'm not going to say, obviously, where he knew him from, but he knew the guy. 15 years ago. Yeah. 
the guy still looks the same. I don't know what pill he's taking. <laughs> but I'm like, excuse my language, but I was like, I know this tall fucker. <laughs> it was crazy. And his voice on the phone for the last two years yep. of doing business, it was driving me insane. I'm like, how do I know him? He ended up um, owning the largest framing country or framing company in Phoenix before the market crashed. Yeah. Like he had 1,500 framers, big, Jeez. big whale framer. And it's just weird, come full circle 15 years later, we're back to talking and doing business. And he went through hard times and learned a lot. So we talked about those journeys. And, you know, everybody makes mistakes. And I think you, if you make the mistakes, just learn from them and grow. Let's, we're uh, all human, right? Yeah, let's mm -hmm. speak about that. Like, looking back, you know, you guys have been doing this for a while now. Obviously, there's some stuff market-related. But what are some of the mistakes you made in the past that, you know, looking back now, you learn from and, you know, that you now anticipate? Like, you can basically use the past mistakes to, like, you know, predict the future a little bit better and, and you know, obviously, again, nobody controls the market, but y you can be better prepared next time. And so what are some of the things that you guys went through that you're like, fuck, should have known that or, you know? Um, I wish we, I, mean, I could speak on both of us probably, it's just investing in yourself more. And that's investing in your business, your whole systems, everything start to finish, your day-to-day -day routines, health, partying. I mean, everyone goes through those party stages. And you learn a lot as you go and what's important and what's not important. Um, we've all been through it. And, like, we coach our younger guys who want to be big whale sales guys and stuff. Like, cut all that bullshit out of your life now. Like, you can have fun. You can do moderation. But you see it, especially in our industry. I mean, I was at an event last night, and, you know, lots of drinking. I didn't drink. And bad people are asking me, why, why aren't you drinking? I'm like, we're here – it's we want to be on a, we want to yeah. be up on a you know different level like so want to be healthy it's super important yeah. and S they, side note when yeah. we went to dinner last i yeah. don't know if you guys recall but we had oh, a yeah. we had a we had a good dinner there and we leave and i was like we had an amazing dinner good quality time obviously we talk business but we also have a good friendship with each other like nobody even nobody had a drink Nobody even thought about having a drink. It's not like we don't have a drink yeah, every now and then, but it's yeah. a, it's a, it's interesting how um, how close circles have, have just a just the same uh, mindset and and mm -hmm. things just go without saying. Also on that end, you know. Look at some of the biggest, um, s well, largest successful people in the world, uh, owning Fortune 500 companies, billionaires. They're on the list. They don't drink. They're on to something. You know, like they just don't. I, I, impacts productivity, your mood, you know, all the things. Whoever says, I got drunk and made a good decision. <laughs> Very rarely does that happen, right? You know, I made a couple rarely. of good ones. <laughs> and mind you, like, I, I think it's part of just growing up, getting older. Like, I've made a lot of dumb decisions drunk. Like, it's just not who I want to be. But it's a phase in your life you go through. So I think that's that's one of the big things, too, of, like, Knowing what we know now, you go, Ryan's man, nervous. I wish I would have known that <laughs> 10 years ago. But then again, everything has a process, has a for journey, reason. you know, and you learn as you go. And I just think it's part of living, growing as an individual, family man, business, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, Max, you brought up uh, we were out to eat and none of us, you just realized we weren't drinking there. We were just talking business. Uh, last week we had a meetup at your house and I don't think one person at that whole entire meetup, I mean, you had a fridge full of drinks or whatever. And if I recall, nobody even touched any. I talked to, talked to Kyle on the way there. He was like, do I have to bring anything? I'm like, Oh, sh I don't think I have any drinks. Maybe you can grab one of those 12 pack, uh, uh, seltzers <laughs> still in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but again, you know, obviously you can have a drink every now and then have fun in moderation, but it's interesting. Um, how, how that just all comes along, you know? Yeah, um, removing that element, you know, the party or the having fun or going out and taking it too far. Like, firsthand, you just see so much more improvement in your relationships, your business, your health, you know, everything. It's all everything. connected one way or another, even if you don't think it is. And then you see, like, people now in the, you know, that we know or whatever still doing those things, and you're like, 
shit, I was kind of that guy for a while. You know what I mean? You're just like, and that's not what I want any representation of myself, business, family. You don't, you know what I mean? It's just all, it comes full circle, I guess. Yeah, you move on from it. Right? You there's move a, on. There's yeah. a time and place for everything. Right? Absolutely. And, uh, once or twice Absolutely. a year, you can let, let go a little But Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's interesting. You know, we always talk about like the circle, how it changes a little bit. And I think it goes both ways, right? You change the circle and the circle changes you. Mm -hmm. um, so, Talk like speaking about the circle, you know, we keep talking about, you know, doing deals together in the future and everything. You said, you know, you guys want to do more development. Uh, we've been looking to multifamily. Um, I know that's something that keeps coming up. Like, what are your thoughts on, on that? I mean, it obviously all ties into mortgage rates and, you know, lev like there's so many moving pieces. So what are you guys' thoughts on transitioning more from like, you know, luxury development flips into more buy and hold stuff? And what is your guys' plan to like kind of get there? Well, we're in the thick of that right now, actually. Like, we have some higher end homes that we're really looking at the numbers and crunching. Like, we kind of want to hold these. We want the mailbox money, but we also are really focused on a blended product in our inventory of multifamily, multiple doors, some single family holds, obviously, development deals that we're always going to do. We love it. But that's also constantly evolving. We move with the market, how that moves. We also move with subs so we get comfortable with certain subs and we notice maybe quality or prices change we look to pivot from that um, gc work too like we're constantly analyzing every aspect how can we improve what's good enough what's not good enough how are people treating our team you know all those things just come into into factor i guess and you no one knows it all you know and you learn that you think you do and then you shift you pivot like we constantly are evolving in the mortgage company too. How can we be more efficient? What are we doing really good? What are we doing bad? Where do we need to improve? So it all comes together in full circle, I think. Um, but yeah, we want to own multiple doors. I kind of want to go against the grain with a lot of things. People are panicked and fearful. I want to buy the fear. We'll sell the greed. Um, just keep constantly doing some similar things about other people, but also doing the opposite. You know, there's a lot of opportunity in the market right now. If you turn the news on, it doesn't feel like that. It's scary what's going on. But when you've done things long enough, you kind of have the inside. You know how to navigate banks. You know how to, you know, off-market stuff, which we get calls on all the time, as well as you guys do. So you kind of have an inside of what's going on. And there are plenty of deals. Like I had an investor yesterday calling He's got a boatload of money, and he's like, there's just no deals out there. I'm like, well, you're not swimming in the right pool because there are deals. Yeah, sometimes you got to create the deal, right? And you have you to don't create know the how deal. to leverage think it and how to box. do it correctly. Yeah. Yeah, think outside mm -hmm. the box. There's uh, still banks doing really good notes right now. You know, rates are what everyone calls high just because a lot of people are newer to the industry, haven't been through this. We have. We've financed rates this high before, you know, even traditional mortgages. Uh, you can look at the trajectory of interest rates. They go up, they go down, just like real estate. But one thing, real estate's time-tested. Usually yeah. always goes up. You just got to be patient. When that market crashed here in Maricopa County, it was like crickets everywhere. You know, I remember all these construction sites empty, but there was a lot of panic. A lot of people were hurt. A lot of money was lost. But the market in Maricopa County rebounded really quickly, where some people could have weathered the storm if they just were patient and came out whole but the panic created a lot of that chaos too so one thing from investors is we don't do any deal that we can't weather the storm meaning if it doesn't perform as a flip we put a tenant in there cover it hold it you know that's our mind like every play needs to have a couple different options just to fall back on so we're not stuck in any situation also too like we learned like if someone wants to do an investment deal and they're like, I never have lost or I'm never like, that's a big red flag for us. Like <laughs> you're going to win, you're going to lose. And also pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. If it's a we're game. hitting singles yeah. and doubles, we're hall of famers. So the home runs come, they're not going to come all the time, you know, but if we have a good batting average, you know, we'll keep going and go from there. But yeah, you guys, you know, one thing, like I said, we've watched the trajectory of what you guys are doing. And it's been cool to see the growth there, yeah. you know, from sitting a couple years back with Max at Houston's and 
having real real conversations of like got this much in my checking account this much in my save you know what i mean and really just wanting opinions and advice and it's just like you absorb everything so we appreciate that and your attention to detail patrick's been cool i mean you're you're really in depth with the design and yeah i'd say you get off on that stuff it's pretty cool <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's a it's funny that you met it, it that also changes right like over mm -hmm. the the last like what year and a half like we got it you know more into that multifamily stuff thinking more about buy and hold mm -hmm. studying setting goals on this you know where we want to get like you know a couple hundred doors by then and like you start making a plan and working towards that and, and you know to your point and you know that's why we're going to start talking more about the, the multifamily stuff is because it's a, it's a whole different asset it's a whole different play i mean the the tucson deal that we uh that we did you know that you guys are obviously um, part of uh, on the finance side is is you know, it's a deal that's been on the market for 60 days. Nobody wants it. It's like it's a shitty deal, right? But then you come in and you actually, mm -hmm. if you know how to work the, 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 the deal and everything, you can make stuff work, right? Now you have a cash flowing asset that most mm -hmm. people wouldn't have touched. And right. rates come down, prime comes out. There's a lot of variables. And then 100%. those values of those multifamily deals go up exponentially. So there's opportunity right now, but people are too fearful. So the guys who are time tested and crafted, They'll, get, they'll jump on that what do you guys benefit. What do you guys think is going to happen on that front with, like, you know, all these, you know, we, we've been talking about it with, you know, with Iman and other guys, like, all these loans coming due now, you know, that people, like, you know, kind of over leveraged at interest rates that just don't make sense anymore and, and they're upside down now. I mean, we talked about it. That, it was you know, $1 trillion dollars in regional bank debt. So what do you think is going to happen? Are we going to see some, like, really good deals or do you think smart gonna people are going to figure out yeah. how to, like, take them out before it gets bad? Like, what are your thoughts on that multifamily market for the next, you know, 12, 24 months? Like, what are we going to see? There'll be a blend, good and bad out of that. But there's a lot of people, and let's specify Maricopa County sitting with a lot of cash just drooling, waiting for opportunity. Those guys are going to really benefit from it. A lot of them work with us. We know, like, they're just waiting or they're already pounding the pavement, you know. Um, and some people naturally are in over their head. Yeah. It just happens, you know. And, you know, we raise capital for banks. We we know how to work the game with the banks and what they want, what they look like. The last 36 months, a lot of these banks weren't even asking for deposits. They're just lending money out, which impacts everything to where we are today, where they're like, we don't want to lend. We're short on deposits, and we have all this debt at 3%. We need to make money, but something's got to give. Um, and then the Fed fund rate's high, so they don't want to borrow from the Feds either. Um, so a lot of variables there, but I just see opportunity in all of it. There's opportunity for us to capture more market share. You know, I don't want to see anyone hurt. I don't want to see banks go out of business, but... It happens in these markets. So helping more people get out of their bad notes, because those covenants and commercial loans and those loan agreements, that fine print, there's ways for banks to call those notes due. And a lot of clients don't understand that. It's not their fault, but that's why the banks review those commercial deals annually, making sure the rents are there, it's stabilized, it's performing, your liquidity requirements are up to what you agreed to. And that gives the bank options of how to call that note due and kind of force a refi or a sale. So just educating at least our clients, our spear of those things that come into play, which we have commercial loans, you know, we have a lot going on. So we watch all that stuff too. Uh, one of the guys you guys are close with, who's a great guy, you know, his current bank doesn't want to lend right now. And he's got a lot of really good clients he services and he wants to take care of them. Like, you need to get these loans out of here. They're all performing loans. So, like, we're going to help him get some of those loans off the book, which helps the bank, helps him. Everybody wins. Yeah. So it's just navigating the tides with everybody and trying to help as many people as we can. So how does that tie into the residential market? Because you were saying the market's still humming, and that's obviously, you know, depends on which price point and locations we're looking at. But uh, you kind of tie into Patrick's question. How does that look like on the residential side? Anything that you're you're seeing um, trends of interest rates. Um, I know you guys are doing a lot of loans right now. Um, so maybe give us a little bit of insight um, on that. A couple of things there. You know, like you can study the Cromford report. You know, we have monthly Cromford meetings. Um, and like Tina will tell you, she's good at the data. A lot of the data is lagging 90 days. 
you know, especially in the news outlets and stuff. So it's not truly up to date. But right now, the data is showing June, July, August, we're back to pre-COVID numbers, which was absolutely bonkers in Maricopa County mm -hmm. for sales, seller's market, transactions happening. I think today I heard what, about 16,000 transactions or actives, right? Was it 16? Well, 6,000 of them were under contract. We have a, don't quote me on that number, but it's pretty close to that. We still have inventory shortage, high demand, lots of people with cash and qualified buyers waiting to buy. As rates come down, those buyers come back. May already trended up for transactions. Um, so as things get better in the interest rate environment, more buyers will get back into the market. I do 100% believe a frenzy's coming again in Maricopa County. And I'm already hearing multiple offers, not just on big stuff, the small houses too, all over the map. Our blended deal flow, like right now we have deals at $100,000 loan. And we have a deal of 12 million, 14 million, 19, 19 million, all different price points, yeah. which is good yeah. because that means at least with our relationships, all areas of the market, the sectors are moving. There's transactions happening and it's not just one bucket. So buyers are getting back into the market. Um, I do believe, well, I said it the last quarter last year that rates would start improving third or fourth quarter this year. Technically rates have, rates have slid the last three months, not enough to yes, where it really marginally moves the needle, but educating your client. Here's where we're at. Here's the game plan. We're going to be with you the whole way. Creating the calm everywhere else is chaos right now. Turn on the news, chaos. You know what I mean? And it's just, you create that relationship and look, we're not going anywhere. We're going to be here. We're also not going to just refi you to refinance you. We need to move the needle enough so we're spending your money effectively. How, how long do you think all these people are going to hold on to their like low interest rates? Because I think that was like a big deal where it's like, oh, nobody's going to ever move again because you know they're going to sit on their two point something rate. And I mean, we've already seen some people that you know have the rates at two nine, and they're like, "I just don't want my house. my house. Like, Here's I got to move. I want to move. Like, yeah. uh, you know, that's what I think. One of the things we learned too is like everything. Every always makes it out like it's going to be long term effect, and then ninety days later, nobody even talks about it anymore, mm -hmm. kind of thing, right? Like, you guys are already seeing people that you know got loans in the twos, and they're like, "Fuck it, I'm moving on." Like, yeah, you know, we we do. Life um, happens. Life happens. But uh, what what we see is uh, the people that have the rates in the twos and the threes, they're turning these. What we've seen is they turn a lot of these houses into rentals, cash and then flowing investment, cash flowing investment, and then they buy a new primary. So that's what we're seeing. So they can still keep that rate, but yet move into a new property um, to Which touch offsets yeah. their new house because they have some cash flow. Yeah. Plus, doesn't help the inventory shortage really because no. that market's that property is not going on the market. Yep. Yeah, and you have people too who, like I said, I want to keep my three percent rate. Well, a lot of these clients might be having a baby, might be getting married running out of space, their house is dated, doesn't fit the current needs. So we talk about creative options to stay in the house, expand the house, remodel the house, you know, with financing tools, or they have to move regardless. They right. outgrew the house. So they convert it to a rental or they sell it, which then helps transactions happen in the market. Like that's the one thing that always wins. Life happens, your life changes, which forces that exit of that low percent, you know, low interest rate. Plus, in the, plus, their homes are appreciated. Yeah, I was gonna say we're still yeah. in appreciation. Yeah. You know, and you were you were asking like about residential and commercial. I mean, obviously in Maricopa, the residential it, for us it's good still. Um, I know a lot of other other lenders it's not, but for us we still get a lot of business in, and it's gonna it speaks to what we're doing on a daily basis, like how we're treating the clients right, how we're communication, just those little things. But on the commercial side, anybody can drive down the street right now and see basically every building uh, for rent. And I think that's where we're going to have the issue is a commercial collapse. It won't be residential. It'll be more on the commercial side. That's what I personally think from what we're seeing and how much stuff's available right now. It correlates with remote working. Yep. You don't need 50,000 square feet corporate offices as much. So that's where a lot of those lease spaces are. Yep. And we talked to commercial realtors, very successful ones. And you know, yeah, there's a lot more vacancies and the big office suites with 50 offices inside. You know, a lot of people don't need that right now. So I think grinds onto something there. 
from multifamily commercial, that's different than the office commercial. Yeah, right. And rents are still high, affordability is high. Um, average median house is what, 683,000 in Maricopa County right now. 18% uh, of people on median income can afford to buy, and this is like to the month right now, I saw this data this morning, can buy in Maricopa County. Well, that number in LA County is 2.8%, I believe. In Washington, San Diego, like 4%. So Maricopa County is still compared to the other, you know, attractive states, really attractive. Like affordability is, even though we're trending up, I think mm -hmm. our market's undervalued. I think we have a lot to offer here. That's why all these big businesses are coming here. There's massive expansion throughout. So long-term growth, I'm really all in and on Maricopa County. Okay, let's talk about something completely different. Uh, yes. We all go to we can go down a rabbit hole. Yeah, we've been. Let's talk about Suns. Oh man, Phoenix Suns. <laughs> uh, you know, we're all we're all uh, in there, season ticket holders. <laughs> you know, living through the pain again. Um, what needs to happen? What's going to happen? Suns. Blow it up. <laughs> blow it up. Blow it up. Yeah. <laughs> blow it up. I mean, we, we blow it up every time, but yeah. in the wrong way. But get some young blood at a discount. Rebuild essentially. Booker was amazing in the playoffs. Um, loved watching that. But I also believe like the big games is where you really have to show up. I mean, I kind of fell in love with Joker this playoff series. Like oh, last night, yeah. Last night, oh, oh my gosh, stud. And you guys know I'm a big LeBron fan. So we're just watching Joker play live. His brother's in the stands in front of us. Like it was just cool. Like and it, that guy. Balls. I think he had more that rebounds last man. night than Aiton in the entire postseason. Yeah, Aiton was, was horrible. Oh, Aiton's yeah. horrible. That's a big man. Reminds me, you know, if you want a big man on your team, you want a Joel, you want a uh, Joker, you know, the just powerful. I would rather get a guy who gets 20 rebounds and we're paying him $5 million versus a guy we're paying a big check to who gets five rebounds and 20 points. Like, I don't care. Like, I, you want grit down low. And yeah. I want to – a true younger point guard, you know, with no egos. So Paul gone. Like who's who's your CP's got all in on Aiton got to go. No, nope. even KD. I mean, he's getting kind of old too, and he didn't. He didn't look we like shouldn't himself. have traded Bridges. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I will say I want the Lakers to win, not because of sports betting. But <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? Um, yeah, I, th I mean, we obviously agree. I mean, obviously, well, painful. we were at the game. We were at the last game again. You painful. know, like last year game set. Like it just, yeah, it's it's a. Uh, it's been like five minutes. The whole arena is dead, right? Everybody's just like, what's going on? Booker didn't didn't even play the last quarter. Like you know, don't want anymore. Like just like, yeah. it's just interesting to see how it switches. And I think I agree. You know, Durant, big name. You know, shot what less than forty percent the entire like. You know, frustrating. Frustrating, and I think again, like if you if you miss a lot and nobody gets a rebound because DA is just like looking at the rim, then you know that's. So I think it's a it's a tricky situation. I read last night. I think just Paul, Aiton, KD, and Booker make up almost 180 million of their salary. So there's no money left, right? Mm -hmm. So I agree. I think Paul got to go. Aiton's got to go. Um, not a, seeing Harden and everybody. So it's just very interesting. Uh, We'll see what happens. Um, just always a good time, but not a good time. You know, we do these interviews and just talk about us, but I think we should talk about you guys a little bit. We're, what's the well, trajectory good thing, look like? Well, good look. thing we're running out of time. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Max, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you didn't give your input on the Suns. Uh, I mean, a lot of words. <laughs> I'm, we had pretty good seats for the last playoff game. And I think it was about after the first quarter, Patrick and I were talking, you just noticed looking at the, all the faces on the bench and that there was really no dynamic, seemed like nobody actually was, was caring at all. And I was like, I can't believe that there's not one guy that steps it up, whether it's from the bench firing everybody up. I was like, nothing is happening. It's like everything at a standstill. Nobody cares. And, and one thing is obviously all the money involved. That's one thing. But more than anything, uh, Patrick and I were talking. I mean, I just like, even if you get paid nothing, I mean, you, you're not going to, you're not going to like fight to the last second for this. 
Yeah, if you're paying me like, forty million a year, I'm in the game until the last second. Yeah. To at least give the fan something. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But also, I think that starts at the top with coaching too. Yeah. You so got, um, this is best teams in history. Their coaches were yeah. a big part of that. Steve Kerr's a great coach. You know, they lost, but he's in it with his team. He's a team coach. You know, players coach, whatever. Yeah. So who's yeah. gonna who's gonna be the next coach? I hope it's not Doc Rivers. It's gonna be the guy from uh, the Bucks. Budenhauer? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Well, we we can't disclose it, but we sold the house to someone that might be in the ring. Um, so we'll. I think we'll leave that bag out of the is. cat when it's. Uh, and if it, yeah, I think I know who that is. Yeah, I think you know. So I think that might be a. I don't think so. I don't hope so. But you know, he just bought a house here. That'd be a coincidence. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, part of the business, right? You just know stuff that people don't know. Um, and that's also educational, too. You know, we all do kind of have an insight on what's going on at times, and it's helpful, too. And I think, you know? yeah, I mean, we always say, like, it's, it's almost like a little, like, a L.A., you know, celebrity map. Like, mm -hmm. we know pretty much every Suns player, Cardinals player. We know where they all live, when they bought it. Like, you just know. If they own in their name, LSCs, you just know, you hear it. And you kind of have to because people want to know when they buy or sell a house, they want to know who lives on the street. That's, you know, person of interest type thing. Um, and sometimes we're involved in those transactions. Sometimes we're part of uh, part of showings, uh, you know, or one of our projects or, or listings is, is in the kind of, you know, closer selection for those guys. And, uh, you know, it's 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 cool to to be able to transition to to that from, you know, selling a hundred thousand dollar home not too long ago. Where do you guys see yourself in five years? Um, I think I think it's. I think we're still not realistic enough in a lot of ways as far as setting goals. You know, um, someone just posted something yesterday, like you know, five years ago you dreamed about being, you know, where you are today, and I was like, we didn't even dream that far five years ago. Like we're already way past what we thought about it, and I think it's the same with the future. I mean, five years is such a long time. Um, Multifamily, I think that's something we want to do more. You want to get into that more passive income, mm -hmm. right? Like if, if we stop working tomorrow, the, you know, no money coming in type thing. So we want to we want to transition. So we, we keep doing the specs, we keep doing the brokerage, all that business that that's your income, right? And then kind of shifting that over to more you know buy and hold product, um, the, the mailbox money, like you said. Um, I think that's the biggest thing, and then. The rest, a lot of the, the, you know, the circle, the smaller circle, the, all that stuff kind of takes care of itself. I think you know, if, you, if you're on a certain mission, it, everything around it kind of falls into place on that same path. So um, I think we'll just keep, keep going as hard as we can and hopefully it goes further than we think. Yeah, I mean, well, what am I going to say? Am I going to disagree now? <laughs> um, We're tired tomorrow. No. Uh, Besides uh, being a scratch golfer, what do you want to obtain? Um, I'm going to kick some ass on the tennis court <laughs> getting there. <laughs> um, no, I agree with Patrick. I um, I think we're, we're being like very conscious, especially on the on the relationship side of things. I mean, you guys know we go all out for our friends, clients, family. Mm -hmm. It has always been like that. Uh, but as far as... Um, growth and 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 a bigger ver bigger vision our circle has gotten like um significantly um smaller um by choice so i think that's a good trajectory that we keep on um you know nurturing and then you know license in florida now we have the first project we're going to see wha where that's going there's there's a lot of opportunities down there but at the same time we want to make sure we have our basis uh, covered here we built that out even stronger and then see where where we expand from there and multifamily certainly being the focus um this year to to get this thing um kind of to the next level you awesome. get a couple multi big multi-family deals and you get to parlay those into other deals and it just starts compounding really quickly that's what that's what you need to do. So I so want to do that, too. One question that we always ask everybody, too, so we'll ask you both one after the other. Um, if you would sit down with, you know, start with your 18-year-old Ryan, like what kind of advice would you give the younger <laughs> version of yourself from, you know, what you learned, like, you know, what to do and not to do? Wow, I'm uh, I'm very judgmental <laughs> <laughs> stuff nowadays, but um, I, I would just say I, I wouldn't have changed my life, um, what I did, but I would um, figure it out earlier in life. So like today when we had a meeting, a bunch of our guys are 30 years old.
and I to, and, and I told them I said if I could go back to being 30 and with the knowledge I have now it'd be a completely different story so you know we're here to help you guys not make the same mistakes or even not the mistakes the the same things we did and we can adjust certain things to help them you know be successful I want to see all these guys that work for us I want to see them you know be successful you know within you know making money but family their personal life kind of like what Brent said we you know everything cures itself together as just one being more selfless yeah so I mean h- hitting the gym you know daily just things like that because it, it does clear your mind and I think we can be just better and we can have a good network of guys that you know work together so to answer your question to the 18 year old me that's exactly what I would do I'd, st- I'd still live the same life you know I met great people along the way but I think now we're just hunkering down more on just what we do just get more focused earlier yep. be more dialed yep. more dialed what about you um, probably exercising more empathy and grace for myself, not beating myself up as much. And then just being a little more selfless, probably. Um, I've always been a worker. I, I'm obsessed with work and I love grinding. I, it's kind of like a drug, you know, like when I can just go, but also just like it's giving other people more grace, you know, everybody's got shit going on in their lives, you know. I process things by talking about them, you know, spitting them out, you know, and emotional and high strung and all those things. But just, just probably giving myself more grace and being more, you know, forgiveful and, I don't know. I, I mean, you're dead. Like, what, what values do you teach your kids? Like, what do you say? Like, those are the things you guys, you know, I mean, they get into the age where, you know, like. Hard work. Um, being kind to each other and, you know, counting your blessings. Like, I work really hard so that my kids don't, you know, grow up wanting, needing for anything. Also, don't want them to be spoiled. I want them to have a good work ethic. Um, but that's why I do what I do. Like, we have nice things because we work hard, but you don't get to take them for granted. 10, 15 years ago, those were like an identity to me, and I thought that made me cool, or, you know, that's how I validated my insecurities and stuff. So teaching them through those, like, you can have all these right nice things by doing the right things. You shouldn't feel bad that you have nice things. We, we like nice things, but we work really hard, and we also don't buy shit that we can't afford. Right. You know, so it's like teaching them tho- those values. Um, my kids are polar opposites, but they're both super smart, and it's fun. They're, my daughter's really sassy and independent. My son's super dependent on me, which naturally I love. He's my mini me. Like, and it's cool watching him because he's he's me, emotional, driven, high strung, like. It, it's is crazy. It gonna, is it going to be NFL or NBA? Uh, he we, says NBA. I mean, that kid works hard, but we all know how that works. You know, he's, we'll see. I mean, I just want him to play sports in college, keep him busy all through high school. Um, it's cool to watch him challenge himself. He plays two years above where he's at. and It's fun. Just another chapter in our life. And My daughter is starting to get into sports now, which she doesn't really like sports, so that's cool to watch. But I don't know, just teaching them work hard, appreciate things, and be nice to each other, and that's that, I guess. All right. Well, then, uh, thank you very much for for joining us, guys. This was thanks uh, for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Absolutely appreciate amazing. It. We're, we we appreciate you guys a lot on all levels. You know you that our clients, like our clients do do that as well so for anyone who wants to reach out to you guys find out more about you um start doing some deals uh, where can we find you where can they find us right <laughs> highplacemortgage.com you can go to or um that's probably all we have right now i mean oh, we'll, we'll, we're on insta we're yeah on we're, on insta, we're, we're on we're on all of them so you'll see highplacemortgage.com and i'm Jesus. sure on this video you'll post it call max and patrick below. you can find yeah. us all the links <laughs> yeah they'll need us anyways to do the deal right next, <laughs> next time find you, the house too. next time you guys are gonna be on the other end doing all the talking yeah we'll do it sounds good well again thanks uh guys for coming um thanks everybody for watching um please make sure again subscribe like share all the fun stuff and then we'll see you guys in the next one thanks guys